If you live in Lexington, you're probably familiar with the artwork of the Latitude Artist community. Many of the city's businesses and galleries exhibit paintings, drawings, and sculpture done by Latitude's artists. Disability doesn't mean inability, and at Latitude, creativity knows no bounds. Latitude, our mission and our vision is that we serve all people with an emphasis on those who have an intellectual and developmental disability. The atmosphere here is pretty peaceful. Everybody has their own art project of their choice and their own medium of choice. And sometimes the other artists are just interested in other people's artworks, so they'll kind of mingle around and see what people are working on and compliment it or give some positive criticism and suggestions. And they just really love to share and bounce ideas off one another. One of our younger artists, he's 21, and one of our older artists is in his close to 70 years old. He's in his late 60s. And I think that's what's so wonderful about here. Everybody does have their own background um, before they came here. And we start to see that, and we start to learn about their background and what made them the person they are and the personality they have, and how that also um, is manifested in their artwork. One thing that we see here is a lack of ego. They're just more interested in being able to be part of other people's lives and just to be simply creative. A typical day at Latitude is really exciting. We open the doors at 8.30, everybody's already waiting in line on their buses and everybody comes in joyful, everyone greets each other. The mornings are always the most exciting because that's when the creativity is flowing. A lot of people will do things you see in pop culture, like cartoon characters or superheroes, and then we have several people who just like to draw portraits, and it may be portraits of themselves or people that's in their lives or a musician that they love. And then there's also a few artists that um, are expressive in different ways, in more of an abstracted, impressionistic way. Like Beverly Baker chooses to be expressive with her alphabet and her numbers and her names and continuously goes over and over them until she fills her page with her name and her, her letters until it's completely black. She's actually had her first solo show in Lexington at Institute 193, and that show actually traveled up to New York City, which is amazing. She's possibly the most famous person I know. No, I didn't know anything about her. I knew it just said Beverly Becker American. It was beautiful and quite intense with some kind of an expressionism to it. Um, yeah, I really loved it. My name is Maya Ferrari. I'm the creative director of Institute 193, uh, which is a non-for-profit art space in Lexington, Kentucky. In Beverly Baker's case, she's well known internationally, so I heard of her from Paris. She was shown by all kind of European galleries um, in art fairs, for example, and in the meantime, she has a very small recognition in her home state of Kentucky. That's what struck me the most, is that people from Paris knew about her and people from Lexington never heard of her. She starts by writing her name or her initials and she covers the paper with those Bs. The density and the movement of uh, the ballpoint pen on the page almost reminded me of like German Expressionism. The surface of the paper was so subtle and, and the lights on it makes the work shine or the colors are changing and suddenly depending on how you look at it you see some red, some green, some blue. But it's always really hard I think to, to make comparison, especially when the artist is nonverbal and cannot speak for the word. So I feel that people might see something different in it depending on their own references. She drew her entire life. 
And as soon as she got into latitude, her sister said that she's changed and she was just feeling so much better. And she produced more and more. And you can see a real evolution of style in her work through the years. The amazing thing about latitude is to provide that space, that freedom space, uh, for those artists who might not have the possibility to produce where they actually live, but they don't have enough room to have an exhibition space, even though they would love to. So I just felt that 193 was just a great fit to provide a professional gallery setting for those works. Our artists are aware of her success and are actually motivated by it and inspired by it. To Beverly, she is passionate about what she does. When she had her show at Institute 193, she was really amazed at how many people loved her artwork. And she had one of her friends who's also an artist here, Chris Wilhoy, and was able to share that experience with him. He was very proud of her and that's something very rewarding for her. Whenever an artist sells a work of art, it's pretty amazing that we'll actually give all, all the money goes back to the artist. In a way, this is their job. Being an artist is a job. And though we may not sell much art, it doesn't feel like a lot of art gets purchased. But when it does, it's always you know an uplifting feeling for everyone. Our artists are able to display their artwork at Third Street Stuff and Coffee. It's also posted for sale. And I try to switch that artwork out every month and a half to two months so each artist is able to have their artwork on display. Recently, we've also had shows at Mulberry and Lime that has now moved to the Sage Rabbit. Latitude is rapidly growing. It feels like several people are getting interested each month. And what I would like to see from Latitude is to continue this mystical, magical vibe, but in a larger facility and possibly even a gallery space where the artists have their home gallery space for the community to come and be supportive and witness the artwork that's created in this creative space.